I think that one of the big questions that parents will ask at the after hearing all of this is, you know, well, you've so we've said that a child is fearful and they're acting out of fear and they're acting through the lens of anger. And we've said that their identity is being manipulated by the alienating parent. What do you do? How do you tell your kid that you love them? How do you, how do you reach out to them? Is it okay if I give them this gift? Is it okay if I call them? Do I attend their uh, graduation, their sports games, their concerts? What do I do? You know, it, it seems like everything I do is wrong. And I think that a lot of parents experience this. And the hard part is that it's obviously going to be different for everyone. You know, everyone's got a different kid and the kid's going to be growing up in a different universe and they have to adapt their behaviors accordingly. But there are some recommendations I think you and I have made across multiple episodes that would be very fruitful for the listener today. And I think the first one is multiple acts of subtlety are far more powerful than one big act of love. Well said. And, and so the thing is like, if somebody, if say your kid has a baseball game, they say, I don't want you to attend my baseball games. If your relationship isn't going to get any worse, then there's no reason not to. I mean, frankly speaking, you should be going anyway. Whether they, you, you can be a silent cheerleader in the stands they, if they're at the baseball game, they've got bigger things to worry about. You know, where's the ball going? Who's the guy they need to worry about on the enemy team? Um, what, what coach is saying, you know, all, they have a whole lot of things to worry about. If you're just there as a silent supporter, even if, even if you decide to film it for yourself later, for example, just go anyway. Multiple acts of subtlety will help you create a track record of uh, positive interactions with your kid, even if they react negatively. So same thing with concerts, same thing with their graduation, for example. I know right now is uh, graduation season. Um, and so a lot of parents are asking, do I attend my kid's high school graduation or their college graduation? Absolutely. This is a one-time event. Um, and do it by whatever means necessary, because when the time comes and they start asking you these questions of what have you done, then you can lay it out for them and show them the track record of your progress, the track record of your efforts to be a part of their life. Just... Other acts of subtlety include things like uh, just small encouragements. I know in our episode, Nine Pitfalls Alienated Parents Make with Children, with Alienated Children, the, there's a small segment right at the end where we talk about uh, Gary Chapman's five love languages. And just as a quick refresher, words of affirmation, uh, quality time, acts of service, material gifts, and physical touch. That, that's five different ways that as an individual, as a parent, you can really bond with your child, really connect with them and give them something that feels positive. Yeah, that's really nice. Just the consistency of all of those acts of love towards your alienated child. Absolutely. Uh, towards your child, even if we take off that label of alienated, they're still your child and you're, there's some natural rights that you have and natural laws of love you can be applying in subtle ways so that you don't flood them out because mm -hmm. emotions because it is such a charged situation absolutely I, I think you've also recommended um finding common points of interest like movies or you know sports that are lighter entry points to dialogue definitely you definitely want to engage in what i would call micro commitments you know smaller yeses that lead to the big yes you know, uh, again, in, in, in our episode with Ginger, we, we would say, you know, I, if, you, if you treat it like dating, it gives you a chance to kind of give it the same sense of lightness that you would when trying to interact with someone that you might be interested in. You know, you can't walk up to somebody and say, hi, my name is Andrew, let's get married. 
but instead maybe you know just something lighter something where that way you can try and uh build a relationship with them you can't go hi i'm dad why don't we have a relationship you know, hi i'm mom why why don't you talk to me anymore try something lighter try something happier and try and provoke them to answer at least in conversationally questions that are not related to the family dynamics. Um, and so things in regards, like you were saying, with uh, mutual points of interest, or even if you know they're interested in something, just immerse yourself into that world, see what it's like, and ask questions about it. And it, it just like with somebody else, with a friend, you know, maybe a friend is interested in something that uh, as an individual you're not too familiar with, showing interest in that makes their wor world feel more exciting. They're like, oh, well, I'm, it gives them the chance to be the expert. Let, let your kid be the expert of something they're interested in, whether it's, I don't know, yeah, whether it's games, movies, uh, you know, or anything, sports, whatever, and uh, art, or, you know, and just let them be the expert. They will, it gives them a sense of authority, a sense of uh, belonging, like, you know, I'm a part of this community and I can show you how awesome this community is. Yeah, just to get some momentum, positive relational momentum going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Question. So that's one of the big ways you can connect with your alienated child. The second one, and this is more indirect, is personal work. And it sounds crazy, but like, like we mentioned, again, I'm referencing Penny's episode. Penny would say conflict is an inside job. You know, it's a, it's a point of going through and realizing how can we as individuals become a better person, become a more stronger person, and be more capable of taking on these bigger challenges in our lives. So if you, if you hang the value of your life onto whether or not your children love you, you're going to feel like your life is worthless and meaningless because there's only one variable that determines your, your life's value. And the truth is your life val is way more valuable than just that just one relationship or one or several relationships. The, your life is a multitude of so many different things, all your passions, your hobbies, your work life, your intimate life, all of these things come together to form the you that is you. And you have the potential as an individual to really rise up and be the best version of you in anything that you want to be. And so rather than getting so caught up in the emotional turmoil of your child rejecting you start looking for ways to make you as an individual a more you could say attractive person to be around be the per be the fun mom be the fun dad the guy or the girl who's out there ma making changes in the world that that means something to you as an individual and as you go out there and you put out that kind of energy naturally you're going to attract more and more people and there's a there's an element of pre-selection in there where you know if you have a bunch of kids hanging out with you and wanting to be with you and spend time with you and your your child is going to see that and say what is the secret sauce why are they why are they so cool what's the, what's the what's the answer to this riddle this mystery and they're going to want to find out and that's when they're going to start kind of timidly taking a couple steps towards you. Maybe they'll send you a text or something, see how you're doing and just to test the waters. And then you could kind of slowly invite them into your world. The, the issue I think that a lot of parents have is their whole world has fallen apart and they don't know where to start to build that. They don't know how to put their life back together. And maybe they define themselves as, as, a uh, as their, their partners, uh, supporter or something like that. And now they don't have any role or any sense of belonging. Um, and I think Barbara, you could speak a little bit more in depth on this, as far as the power of having a coach and, and the power of having someone in your support network to help you 
lay down the foundations of your life? Well, as usual, Andrew, I never answer your question right away because I just want to back up to something that you said that I thought was really powerful. And you said, um, invite them into your world. So I'll just reframe that to, yeah, like the invitation is to meet your alienated child where they are and invite them into your world. And I thought that was really beautiful. Absolutely. Um, when I meet women in my coaching practice, I really encourage women to get support. Emotional support makes the difference. So whether that, that's conflict and divorce or conflict pertaining to your child, alienated or not, I really truly believe that emotional support, uh, heart-centered, intentional, uh, solution-focused support can make such a difference for women or men or any parent going, going through something like this. And um, when the parents change, the children actually feel the shift, even if they're teenagers or in their early 20s. So the, it's the work of, that parents need to do, and no one can do it for them. Uh, no one can do it for us but ourselves. But having that support, very intentional support with the right person, allows you to make those breakthroughs to achieve the healing that you want or the reunification that you're hoping for or whatever, whatever your goals are in, in the, in the conflict. 